on World News Tonight. London Bridge has fallen. The second Elizabethan era of Britain's history ends as Queen Elizabeth passes away. World's newest monarch. As one chapter ends, another begins as Elizabeth's son Charles ascends to the British throne. Paying tribute. Heads of state and counterparts remember the late Queen through various mediums. And international mourning. The world joins the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth to mourn the passing of the British monarch. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News tonight and we start off with somber news as the longest reigning British monarch Queen Elizabeth has passed away leaving an aching hole in the hearts of Britons and the world most having never existed in a world without her. She was the comforting touchstone for her people and her royal family during moments of tragedy and challenge. This is the last moment the world saw Queen Elizabeth. Just two days ago, the Queen pictured looking frail, but sprightly, meeting the new British Prime Minister, always doing her duty, even days before her death. The palace first announced this morning doctors were concerned about her health, then around 6.30 local time, posting a statement on the gates, reading, the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. Prime Minister Liz Truss, who had appeared in that last photo with the Queen, saying she was her inspiration. She was the very spirit of Great Britain, and that spirit will endure. Tonight, the Queen's son, Charles, now becoming King Charles III, though his coronation will not likely be for months. In a statement calling his mother's death, a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family. The royal family pictured racing to be by her side. Grandson, Prince William, driving. Her sons, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, in passenger seats. Already with her at Balmoral, Prince Charles, with Camilla and the Queen's only daughter, Princess Anne. Prince Harry travelling alone to see his ailing grandmother, arriving after her death was announced, leaving Meghan behind in London, the Duchess of Cambridge staying with the children. Throughout the UK, flags are at half-staff, crowds gathering in front of the palace to remember Great Britain's longest-serving monarch, a historic 70 years on the throne. Born in 1926, the third grandchild of King George V, Elizabeth would guide the nation and its monarchy through historic challenges. During the Blitz, the royal family stayed in London despite the nightly bombing raids from Nazi Germany. To the people of Britain, there was this message from their future queen. We know, every one of us, that in the end, all will be well. For God will care for us and give us victory and peace. That speech sealed a special relationship with her future subjects. <laughs> Westminster Abbey, 1953. The first time TV cameras were allowed inside to record a coronation. The celebration was seen worldwide. <laughs> and Elizabeth's reign would be felt worldwide. She was the most widely traveled monarch in history she helped transform Britain's empire, easing former colonies into states, and all that while balancing motherhood and monarchy. Three sons and a daughter. She encouraged her children to live lives beyond the palace walls. In some ways, the royal family appeared just like the rest of us, vulnerable. There was divorce and reconciliation. Her son, Prince Andrew, mired in accusations of sexual misconduct. But the tragedy of Princess Diana was an especially dark moment for the royal family. Her fairy tale romance and marriage ended in scandal with a messy divorce and then death. Diana killed in a traffic accident in Paris. The royal family grieved privately, but there was growing anger in Britain that the monarchy was out of touch, detached and aloof. The Queen quickly returned to London from her vacation home to pay tribute to Diana and face a challenge to modernise the monarchy. I, for one, believe there are lessons to be drawn from her life 
and from the extraordinary and moving reaction to her death. She embraced many changes, including the marriage of her grandson, Prince William, to commoner Kate Middleton. And Prince Harry to the American actress, Meghan Markle. In 2021, her beloved husband of seven decades, Prince Philip, died. In her words, he was her strength and stay. Her platinum jubilee celebrated with a military parade. Beacons lit across the world. I keep mine in here. A surprise appearance from Paddington Bear. And over 10 million people across Britain gathering for street parties to honour their one and only Queen. The Jubilee concluded with a final wave from Queen Elizabeth from the balcony of Buckingham Palace. She was joined by three future kings, Prince Charles, Prince William and Prince George. The crowds cheering for Queen Elizabeth II, a monarch for the ages. From abdication to divorce and accusations of racism, the royal family has been no stranger to scandal over the decades. Queen Elizabeth II is largely credited with weathering various storms, the picture of poise amid family dramas and political turmoil. The death of Queen Elizabeth II has been announced, bringing to an end the longest reign of any British monarch. Born on April 21st, 1926, the princess had never expected to ascend to the throne. But after her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated in 1936, the crown passed to her father, George VI. My whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Tragic news. She was just 25 when she became Queen Elizabeth II in 1952 on the death of her father. And following by the heavily veiled grieving figures. She was crowned the next year at Westminster Abbey. Winston Churchill was the first of her 15 prime ministers. And during her 70 year reign, there were 14 US presidents. The young Queen Elizabeth spent much of the early years saying farewell to the British Empire amassed by her forebears from Kenya to Hong Kong to Barbados. However, she remained the monarch of 15 countries and head of the Commonwealth. Her own personal union to Prince Philip stayed solid for 74 years until his death in April 2021. The couple had four children, beginning with Charles, who was born in 1948 and who now succeeds her to the throne. The Queen's life became one of public duty, attending thousands of official engagements across the globe. She was loved and respected by many. Millions turned out to celebrate her 70th year on the throne in June 2022. The Queen herself had to step back from some of the partying due to recurring health problems. Commentators agreed that she came across as a dignified, down-to-earth and witty woman. Critics said she was too solemn and distant, a woman recognised by millions, but known by hardly anyone. Away from her public duties, horse racing and her beloved corgis were lifelong passions. As was the outdoors, like her estate at Balmoral in Scotland, where she was more at home in tweeds than tiaras. Her reign was rarely plain sailing. The 40th anniversary of her accession was a year that she famously described as one of disaster and misfortune. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. Three of her four children's marriages had failed and there was a major fire at her Windsor Castle Royal residence. The death of Charles's ex-wife, Princess Diana, in 1997 was even more harmful to the family's public prestige. As your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In years later, some of the damage was repaired by events like the marriage of her grandson, William, to commoner Kate Middleton in 2011, watched by billions around the world. But with Queen Elizabeth's death, the monarchy's future is likely to face scrutiny like never before. Polls suggest Charles will be a far less popular British monarch. And there are other challenges. Prince Harry and his American wife, Meghan, giving up their royal duties amid accusations of racism has robbed the institution of two of its most popular global figures. 
and the US sex abuse lawsuit against Prince Andrew, which he paid to settle while admitting no wrongdoing, also left its mark. The death of Britain's Queen Elizabeth finally hands on the duties and heavy responsibility of the monarchy, a task to which she devoted her own life to maintain its popularity in the face of seismic political, social and cultural change. Marking the beginning of a lengthy and heavily planned period of mourning, it brings a generational shift in the monarchy that's been decades in the making. As the late Queen has been facing health problems in the recent past, King Charles has been transitioning into the spotlight. We have Abhidharana World News Special Correspondent Dilini Senvi Ratna, who joins us now from London in the United Kingdom with more details. Dilini, over to you. Yes, Shanali. At the moment the Queen died, the throne passed immediately and without ceremony to the heir, Charles, the former Prince of Wales. But there are a number of practical and traditional steps which he must go through to be crowned King. He will be known as King Charles III. That was the first decision of the new King's reign. He could have chosen from any of his four names, Charles Philip Arthur George. He is not the only one who faces a change of title. Although he is heir to the throne, Prince William will not automatically become Prince of Wales. That will have to be conferred on him by his father. He has inherited his father's title of Duke of Cornwall. William and Kate are now titled Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge. There is also a new title for Charles's wife Camilla, who becomes the Queen Consort. Consort is the term used for the spouse of the monarch. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. And that was Abdul Darana World News Special Correspondent Bill Niseni Ratna from London in the United Kingdom. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, with the news of Her Majesty's passing being the forefront of all forms of media, broadcasters around the globe paid respects, including figureheads such as Canada's Prime Minister Trudeau, the White House, and also Spain's reigning monarch, King Felipe. We are coming on the air with somber news from Buckingham Palace. The news spread quickly across the globe. Queen Elizabeth, the UK's longest-serving monarch, has died from the U.S. and the Bahamas. The palace has just issued uh, this statement. It says the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. To the U.K. King. Prince Charles immediately becomes King Charles, the King of England, the King of Canada, by the way. And Canada. Newscasters bid their goodbye to Queen Elizabeth II. A somber open at the New York Stock Exchange as the U.S. paid their respects. News of the Queen's passing broke during a White House press briefing. Press Secretary and Corinne Jean-Pierre. The United Kingdom is one of our closest allies. And uh, again, our hearts go uh, to the people of the United Kingdom, to the Queen, and to, um, to her family. From one royal to another, Spain's King Felipe offered his condolences to the British royal family. La Reina Isabel será recordada Queen Elizabeth will be remembered as one of the best queens of all time due to her dignity, sense of duty, courage and her commitment to her people always and at all times. The United Kingdom and the world is in mourning. Londoners, young and old, paid their tributes shortly after news broke outside Buckingham Palace. There'll never be anybody like her ever again that will preserve so long. I can't really believe it, to be honest, because she's been obviously queen my whole life. The Crown's dominions also observe displays of respect along with the rest of Europe. Today marks the end of an era, the close of the second Elizabethan age. This time of mourning will pass, but the deep respect and warm regard in which Australians have always held for Her Majesty will never fade. May she rest in eternal peace. Young New Zealanders performed a haka at the Auckland War Memorial to pay tribute to the Queen. Along with this, the European Union flags at the European Commission and the European Council building in Brussels were lowered at half-mast. Denmark's Queen Margareth, Norway's King Harald and Sweden's King Carl Gustav paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth. In a statement addressed to the King Charles, 
Queen Margaret said Queen Elizabeth had been a towering figure among the European monarchs and a great inspiration to us all. The 85-year-old monarch, King Harold, sent his condolences to the royal family and the British people, stating that for nearly a century, Her Majesty had devoted her life to the service of the Commonwealth, following the British people through good days and bad in times of happiness and sorrow. Sweden's King Carl Gustav said in a statement he was deeply saddened by the news. Even among monarchs, Queen Elizabeth's tenure was revolutionary and of great significance to much of the world. Leaders from every corner of the globe briefly united in homage to Queen Elizabeth II. Tributes poured in from countries she had ruled over to those she had been at war with, from tiny territories to the mightiest governments on the planet, and from centuries-old institutions to nations that had not yet been born when she took the throne. With the Union Jack flying at half-mast, the United Kingdom enters a period of mourning. At the news of Queen Elizabeth's death, crowds gathered outside Buckingham Palace, undeterred by the rain. While Prime Minister Liz Truss praised her as the very spirit of Great Britain, opposition leader Keir Starmer hailed a remarkable sovereign. Above the clashes of politics, she stood not for what the nation fought over, but what it agreed upon, a symbol of the best of us. Commonwealth leaders also paid tribute. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said the Queen had a deep, abiding love and affection for the people of his country. Canada is in mourning. She was one of my favourite people in the world, and I will miss her so. Indian PM Narendra Modi said he would never forget her warmth and kindness, especially when she showed him a handkerchief gifted to her by Mahatma Gandhi, while Australia's leader praised the fidelity, integrity and humour in which the Queen carried out her duties. In Paris, a portrait of the former monarch hung outside the Elysee Palace, while President Macron paid tribute to her on Twitter, remembering her as a friend of France and a kind-hearted Queen who has left a lasting impression on her country and her century. Flags also flew at half-mast in Washington, D.C. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill said she charmed us with her wit, moved us with her kindness and generously shared with us her wisdom. Above all, the Queen is being remembered as a figure of stability across a turbulent period in history after 70 years on the throne. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at the love story of the Queen, the passing of her husband, Prince Philip, only a year ago in April. And let's now pause for a moment and take a look back at their 73-year-old story. A queen and her prince side by side for seven decades through a lifetime of royal celebrations and scandals, weddings and funerals. He has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. Their early story was a real-life fairy tale. Elizabeth, still a princess, first saw Philip, a handsome naval officer, when she was just 13. The schoolgirl crush blossomed into an old-fashioned romance. World War II kept them apart, but they managed to stay in touch by mail. In July 1947, Philip asked for the future queen's hand in marriage. Just four months later, a historic wedding at Westminster Abbey. A celebration for a country still recovering from the trauma of war. Princess Elizabeth became a naval officer's wife, living quietly in Malta, starting a family. That all changed when her father, King George V, died, and the young Princess Elizabeth became queen. At the coronation, Prince Philip swore his allegiance, saying he would be her liege man of life and limb, giving up his brilliant naval career to serve his queen. While the Queen looked after her nation, her people and the Commonwealth, Philip was the patriarch, looking after the family, a devoted father and husband, admitting in a rare public moment it wasn't always easy. They were married for an incredible 73 years, united until Philip's death in April of 2021. 
The queen, private in her grief, leaving a handwritten note on his casket. And as she had throughout her life, devoting herself to duty, keeping calm and carrying on, and just months after Philip's death, honoring his life's work. As the impact of the environment on human progress was a subject close to the heart of my dear late husband, if we fail to cope with this challenge, all the other problems will pale into insignificance. Queen Elizabeth will be buried with Prince Philip in Windsor Castle's King George VI Memorial Chapel. The two side by side again. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again on Monday for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we air tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we are leaving you tonight with visuals of people around the world gathering in solidarity to pay respects to Her Majesty the Queen. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and have a good night.